243 hopefuls enter day 1A of EPT Berlin to prove they were worthy of the title. Lurking among the masses are some serious silverware owners. Two-time High Roller Champion, Philip Grusom. PCA High Roller Fiend, Will Molson. And three former EPT Main Event title winners. Compounding the pedigree, multiple World Series of Poker bracelet winner, Barry Greenstein. And two of the most feared names in the game. This is the time. The time to grind. The time to prove yourself. The time to survive. The journey continues right now. running, we've brought the world's biggest poker tour to Germany. Home to the Autobahn, the Bratwurst, and the Pokestars.com EPT Berlin from the Grand Hyatt, hosted by the Spielbank Berlin. Down the block from the majestic Potsdamer Platz, seconds from where East met West, amateurs have collided with pros on the floor, starting off day 1A with fireworks. Off and three. Last time, Vanessa Selbert was back with a vengeance, using her aggression to steamroll the competition over and over and over again. On the TV table, one high roller champ joined another. Nice, finally a fish. And a celebration ensued. Yes. Jan Heitman showed he's still a major contender. I feel very confident about reaching day two. I'm very comfortable. I'm playing well. I got my morale boosted. While Barry Greenstein proved that with age comes great wisdom, making one of the sickest reads in the business. The stakes are high, the game is fierce. Just make sure you're able to stay afloat. And there he is, literally, the 2011 PCA High Roller Champion and High Stakes Specialist, Will Molson. His dreams of an EPT main event title still loom. It would definitely mean a lot to win here in Berlin because a main event field is just a whole different dynamic than a high roller field and it would just show that I'm capable of adjusting and doing well in something else. He's sitting pretty at our feature table on almost 100k. To Molson's left is the notorious Philip Grusom. His skill's not under question but he's had a frustrating day so far. Meanwhile, Barry Greenstein has demonstrated to the table how exactly you capture some silverware. Numerous pros seated together, holding almost every title in poker, but one still eludes them all. An EPT main event trophy. Our secondary feature table boasts two-time NAPT champion, Vanessa Selbst. She's approached day 1A roughly equivalent to the way Usain Bolt approaches a casual run in the park. Survival is the name of the game as play continues to finish off this day 1A. Well, 243 players started the day. We're already down to 188. One of those 188, Martin Stoschko, he used to work in an auto assembly plant, so man, is he happy to be here. Jan Heitman just became a new dad, so baby needs a new pair of shoes, literally. Will Molson has two seconds and a first in PCA high rollers, but not much in main events, so he's pretty much terrible. Phil was pretty card dead last time, so we spent most of the day drinking. A man after my own heart. Well, Philip Grusom is one of three short stacks at this feature table, along with Tommy Nord and Max Lemansky. Will Molson at the opposite end of the spectrum. Tournament average just shy of 40,000. Six countries represented at the feature table. Germany, Lebanon, the USA, the Czech Republic, Sweden, and Canada. But mostly Germany. Blinds 200-400 with a 50 ante. Action's been folded around to Jan Heitman. Queen nine of spades. Not the tightest of plays if he chooses to enter this pot, but certainly not bad. His name's Jan Heitman, not Jan Teitman. Under the gun, plus two, makes it 900. Andreas Klaufeld has folded, so action's on Chadi Mahej. Rockets. And he elects to call. Interesting just call. 
Unless your table's putting the squeeze on constantly, you should really three bet to keep this pot from going multi-way. Max Lomensky with suited connectors also makes the call from the hijack seat. Our hedge is super deep, so people are going to want to try to work their implied odds against him. Tommy Nord calls out of the small blind with sixes. Will Molson gives up the big. We're going four way to the flop. He's only going to win it one out of every two times. Not optimal. Nine, seven, four. Top pair for Heitman, who was the pre-flop raiser. It's been checked to him. It's a great spot from the C-bet. sure he has no issue with winning it here, letting this pot get bigger. 2,250. This is a gross spot for Merhaj, and he's basically just got to play for pot control now. He calls. Lomansky's got middle pair. And looks like he'll also call. With a bet and a call in front of him, he really shouldn't be overcalling in that spot, especially for his stack size. Tommy Nord gives up the sixes. So three way to the turn, which is another nine. Jan's not really going to have a nine here very often, so I wouldn't be at all surprised if he continued to continue. Ninety-five percent favorite to win the hand, and he bets three thousand six hundred. Unfortunately for Merhez, he's still compelled to call here. Jan's usually likely to have an overpair here a decent percentage of the time, something like jacks or tens. Merhez does call. Lomansky will finally get out of the way. Heads up to the river. Merhez needing an ace. But it's a seven, Heitman with a full house. Jan full houseman, obviously he's got to make a value bet here. Question is, how much? 18 and a half in the middle, roughly. And Heitman's bet is 5,400. Knowing what the hands are, this is an excellent bet by Heitman. I think Merhez is pretty much compelled to call. This bet's for less than a quarter of the pot, and there's so much money out there already. He does call, and Heitman shows the nine. Merhej may be thinking, aces cracked again, but them's the breaks when you decide you want to flat with aces. A decent sized pot, meaning that Heitman's stack is up to nearly 55,000. Queen nine. Queen nine. Is he saying queen nine or queen no? Larry Greenstein tweeting in German. Is there anything the poker legend can't do? No. The answer is no. Jan Heitman clearly a better poker player than he is proofreader. Dershnit was missing an H, Jan. <laughs> wow, how did you even know that? A-level German, Joe. A-level German. Out in the field, we have three former EPT champions. Anton Wick. Lucien Cohen, a.k.a. the man with the rat. And we've got the man with the monkey, Vladimir Geshkenbein. Let's head over to our secondary feature table. Vanessa Selfs is looking for her first EPT title, but I could have sworn she's got at least six. Olivia Bousquet's online handle is LivB, which means I accidentally asked him out over Twitter once. Vanessa's just raised Scott Baumstein's big blind. Does she have Scott? Scott's made the call. He'll be playing this hand out of position. The flop is queen, five, deuce with two hearts. Baumstein checks. Vanessa looks like she's going to continue to be a boss. Always betting this one. She makes it 1,200. Looks like Scott's taking some notes. Let me guess how your notes on Vanessa read. Bet, 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 cold four bet, raise, bet. So he flats, and the turn brings the king of diamonds. Scott checks a second time. This board's looking better and better for an early position raiser. Now, Scott, make sure you write this down. It's another bet. Don't want to miss that. 2,800. <laughs> and having called the flop, Scott Baumstein calls the turn as well. 11,000 in the middle. And the five of spades on the river, which pairs the board. No draws came in, however. It looks like Baumstein's going to bet Steen. 
He leads out for 5,300. Oh, you do not bet into Vanessa Selbst. She raises enough to put him all in. I don't know what Scott has, but I know he's in a sixth spot. I know he thought he was value betting. This is such a dry board, it's hard not to call her if you have any kind of hand. I know you can value raise this with the hands that just have me slightly beat, and I know you can do this with less than that. Scott calls. You're good. Okay. Vanessa was bluffing with just a jack. Scott Baumstein had top pair. Super tough cost, and she's also shoving all better hands. What? I thought he hit the king too, actually. I really thought he had the king jack or king ten. Uh-huh. It's the only hand that makes any sense. Tough to get a guy to full top pair when your rep's more aggressive than an axe murderer on prob night. Well, despite doubling up Scott Baumstein, Vanessa Stelps is still one of the 10 biggest stacks in the tournament. Sam Chartier still sits at the top of the leaderboard, playing 104,200. So Chartier with two and a half times the tournament average. I asked Sam what he listens to on his iPod, believe it or not. It's 50 Shades of Grey on audiobook. The blinds are up, and the bears are here. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Service? Ah, huh, jealous, jealous, hmm? I can't believe they left Jan Heitman out. Not nah, cool, brah. Ah, thanks, guys. Action's been forwarded to Barry Greenstein in the small blind. 250 to call, but he raises to 1,500. <laughs> Martin Stashko with queen three will defend. Stashko's been pretty card dead so far this tournament. He knows Barry's gonna raise just about anything small to big. Unfortunately, he oh. is dominated. Flop is king high with two spades. We all know Barry's going to continue more often than when you don't use the cheat code in Contra. He makes it 2,000. Stashko quickly calls. Martin's getting a little loosey-goosey, but in his mind, queen high is going to be good some of the time against two random cards. Five of spades gives Stashko a flush draw. Barry checks to him. Puts the brakes on. Let's see if Martin's going to follow through on his float. 3-6. 3, 3,600. Barry does have the best hand, but much like him accidentally walking in on a German house club, I don't think there's much of a shot. He sticks around here. Well, Barry does fold, so Martin Stashko gets that one through and adds nearly 4,000 chips to his stack. You might think Barry's irritated, but he's actually just trying to figure out where to buy glow sticks. The dance party continues right after this. Uns, 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 uns. Here in Berlin at the PokerStars.com European Poker Tour, Barry Greenstein was just bluffed out of a pot by Czech pro Martin Stashko. But earlier in the day, the old man showed Max Lemansky he's got some moves of his own. Usually at a table you'll pick someone that you feel you can push around because they are playing maybe too many hands, and this guy really fits that description. I have a little bit of advantage that they know who I am, but a lot of times people who haven't played with me think I'm a pretty tight player, so it means I can get away with stuff. And then my favorite opponent limps to start. I think he just got tired of me raising and him having to give some of them up. He made a 1600 with jack three of spades. I was on the button. I would have raised on the button if he folded, and I just wanted to play heads up with him in position. Now the flop came. He checked, and I made a 2200 on the flop. Very bets. 2200. Looks like I have a big pair, but he called. Someone else calling him might think, oh, there's a danger, he could even have an eight. He you know, just plays too many hands, so I just decide I'm not gonna play him for having anything. Next makes a call. The uh, nine of clubs comes on the turn. Puts a three to a straight flush, there's still a pair of eights on the board, and he decides to bet out into me. 40 some hundred, and I hadn't seen him make any play like this at all, it just really looks stinky. He's got a little crazy in him, uh, that he, maybe if he had a big draw, he'd come back over the top and just get it in. And I thought it might be more effective and look even stronger if I just called. I'm still in his mind, I think, representing a big pair, and I don't think he can beat a big pair. But now a nine comes on the river, puts up two nines and two eights. 
and he bets 70 some hundred into me. But remember, the bet sizing was a little strange. He bet 4,000 into me on the turn, which again was stinky that he bet out. If he had a big hand and he thinks I have an overpair, he's gonna bet more than that. So it just really looked like he's bluffing on the river. So I made it 20,000 straight, and uh, which was almost all of his chips and almost all of my chips. I was pretty confident the whole way. He just has nothing. He's going to have to give it up, and he gave it up. Next folds, and Barry will win this pot. So it was almost the hand before the dinner break, so that means he won't eat well, and, and, and I will. Been to dinner break with Barry before, by the way. He's that thin because he doesn't eat. His girlfriend has to force feed him. I once saw her resort to the choo-choo train. Thank you, Joe. That's an image that none of us wanted in our heads. How do you think I felt? Action folded to Tommy Nord on the button. Playing just shy of 20 big blinds. He raises with ace nine, makes it 1,200. Will Molson with ace four suited. Dominated, but suited. And Nord doesn't necessarily have to have an ace to open the button. Will lets it go. Phil Gruesome in the big blind has a six. Dominated again, Domination Nation. And Phil All is right. gonna have a drink. Stay right. a bit, or... Maybe. He's trying to get a read. Or he's just trying to have a drink. Maybe he'll find inspiration. Well, he decides to move all in. I wanna stay, but. He shipped for 22 big blinds. I can also drink a beer outside from the table. <laughs> yeah. Nord makes the call. Some early tourney gamble gamble. You'll almost never see this if these guys have big stacks. Well, Nord is the player at risk, but he is a 61% favorite. Hmm. There's a 15% chance of a chop. Hmm. And an 8 10 5 flop with two clubs. That's no good. The only draw gruesome flop is runner, runner. Nord now a 75% favorite. Make that 83%. Gruesome can now only hit a non-club six ball. The river is a jack, giving Nord a straight. That straight's just overkill. So Nord will double up to nearly 20K, and Phil Gruesome will be left with just four big blinds. He's at 5% of the tournament average, lol. Now a little comeback. Positive attitude, five double ups and you're right back in it. Let's head to the outer tables where Vladimir Geshkinbein has just put a bad beat on David Peters. Wow. Oh, that's so gross. What the heck, why'd you hit your king? You had it. That said, Vlad, act embarrassed till he walks away. Gesh combine up to over 100,000 in chips, one of the five biggest stacks in the room. He's had two caches on the EPT, including a win at Snowfest in the Austrian Alps last season. That result worth 390,000 euros. And he's come to Berlin in search of his second title. Last year's Snowfest it was my first EPT win. That was amazing. Winning a major event is an amazing feeling. You have to experience it yourself to know how it feels. I heard the year Vladimir Gashkin by one Snowfest, they had to pay him with one of those comically oversized checks just so his name would fit. Back to our feature table. Well, Will Molson has three bet Barry Greenstein, and Barry's made the call out of position with a dominated hand. This is a hand with a lot of possibilities, however. One of them is to be completely dominated. Flop is ace, jack, three. Molson flops top pair. Greenstein with a gut shot. Barry's gut shot is to the nuts. Barry checks. Molson continues for 2,300. Barry floats him out of position with queen high and a gut shot. The turn is the five of clubs, so Barry picks up a flush draw to go with his gut shot. Checks a second time. Will should most certainly keep betting. He does. 5,000 straight. Now that Barry's picked up more outs, I assume he's not going anywhere, but I'd love to know what his plan would have been had a brick come off. Barry calls a second time. It's a brick on the river. Barry checks. Will Molson checks behind. 
and we'll win the pot. Pretty surprised Will didn't go for a little thin value there in the river. Maybe afraid he'd been betting into a set or two pair. Barry obviously didn't think this was a hand he could bluff his way out of, and he was probably right. So Will Molson wins a pot with more than 11,000 in it, gets his stack up to over 110,000, meaning he will be second on the leaderboard, just behind the current tournament chip leader, David Yan. Former chip leader Sam Chartier has fallen down to fifth, and notice that Vanessa Selbst has now dropped out of the top 10. What? It's gotta be some kind of mistake. Blinds are up 300, 600 with a 75 ante. Martin Stashko folds under the gun. Tommy Nord doesn't want to play. I just noticed he has his name on his jacket. That's adorable. Will Molson passes. Well, we can't see Phil Gruesome's cards, but we can see he's chipped up a bit. But I'm getting nervous now. But he's still playing shovel, fold, hold him. Six and a bit. Guess we're having an unofficial sweat with hand. Or hedge, snap call. I said, snap call. Oh, wait, still action behind. Think, Stapes, think. Yes, there's a chance you're dominated, but you're suited. You can flop Broadway. There's also a way bigger chance you're ahead. He's called. Finally. Lemansky folds the small blind. Just Barry Greenstein in the big. King nine off, he'll muck. So Phil Gruesome at risk with ace. Two. Two aces? Okay, we need a six. No, a six. <laughs> gruesome is dominated. It's looking gruesome for Gruesome, James. Nice. Good time. Good timing. I agree. Good time and good timing from her hedge. <laughs> Not anymore. There's a six on the flop. Gruesome takes the lead. Kid runs good. Beer for free. I don't think you need any more beer. A queen is not good. A queen means no beer for you. A queen would counterfeit Gruesome's two pair. A 10 wins it from her hedge as well. The river's a seven. So Gruesome doubles up. Oh, now I feel bad I told her hedge to call. Look at him. One. Doesn't even know what happened. I can three bet you guys again. Nice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you got a real monster stack now. Poker, flirting, singing, drinking. Is there no end to this man's talents? The last year went really good in the big tournaments. I won two high rows in a row in Barcelona and in London. It was really great, a lot of luck, and then I was very close in San Remo, had almost all chips in play, and then played really bad and gave it away. I was going for the hat trick, but <laughs> didn't work out, but still a, a, a good series, yeah. The London tournament was the biggest win. Everybody was just happy and all together partying the next days. For me, it, just was a great day. Winning an APT title would be really great, but I know how difficult it is. Even uh, three of my friends already got one. <laughs> to win the APT Berlin would be even better to win another APT because it's my home country and so many of my friends are here, so it would be a really nice crowd to find a table. But uh, it's really hard and I'm not expecting to win an EPT title my whole life, probably. But I'm still gonna try it every time. And hope for the best. Just remember, no matter how many EPTs you win, you'll never be as famous in Germany as David Hasselhoff. Heading over once again to our secondary feature table where we find Vanessa Selbst in action again. And Vanessa Selbst has bet. Are we getting this? Don't want to miss this now. Action on Dmitry Grunienko. Vanessa's reputation has actually been working against her thus far today. Looks like he's counting out a call. Second thoughts. No, he's calling. So 30 and a half thousand in the middle. The four of hearts on the river. Grunienko checks. 
Selps was the pre-flop aggressor, and Grignanko has checked her on every street now. Will Vanessa fire again? Vanessa is a wizard, but this young hobbit has stationed her so far. She checks behind. And she mucks. So Grinenko wins the pot uncontested. But but wait, what if her hand was good? She didn't even, she, but, the, but I don't. Hmm. Vanessa a little rattled right now. The first half of the day was going really well. The second half, not so much. So what do you think of Vanessa Selp's uber aggressive style? Join the conversation. Tweet using the hashtag EPTBerlin. Welcome back to day 1A of the Berlin leg of the European Poker Tour, where it seems the boys at the feature table aren't just here to play poker. Sitting to my left, Phil, the high roller champion. He's quite the character at the table. Today was a crazy day. Didn't hit a hand for six hours. Just waiting, waiting. I didn't play that well, so I thought it's time to drink a beer. Cheers. I like to joke around a little bit and yeah. There's a cute Polish dealer at our table and uh, he was actually singing a love song to her in Polish. <laughs> She seems to like it. She seemed pretty flattered. <laughs> he got a smile. We got a good kick out of that. Uh, yeah, it was fun. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear any of that because I am enraged with jealousy. Do you know how long I've been working on her? I tweeted at her in London. I bought her cheese in the Bahamas. I bought Polish Rosetta Stone! Blinds are up, by the way, to 400-800 with a 100 ante. Action's been folded to Will Molson in the small blind. He has raised it to 2,000. 10-7 of spades for Phil Gruesome, Joe's enemy. G-Shade Shedham, by the way, Kate. G-Shade Shedham, Nadisha, 10-7, peak, spades. That's in Polish, Kate. As I speak, a Polish dealer is consulting a lawyer on how to get a restraining order. Wouldn't be the first time. Gruesome will make the call and play a flop in position. Please put three spades out there. Now, now. Instead, four, five, six with two clubs. Gruesome with an up and down straight draw. Molson's still ahead right now with queen high, but it's a statistical dead heat. Molson continues for 2,500. Of course, Don Juan over here flopped huge. Hate the game, not the player. He moves all in, and Molson quickly folds. Ah, oh, come on, Will. Can't we get rid of this guy? Jeez. Oh, he's doing that right at me. Nice yeah, kid's got alligator blood. Whatever. Next hand. At one point, he was down to four big blinds. He's now up to 23,000. We got it. You ask for the next hand? We've got the next hand. And action will be on Andreas Klaufeld, who has ace-10 off. Super tight players won't raise this under the gun. Honestly, he does look like the super tight type, but whatevs. My guess is that he is tight, and he just doesn't know that ace-10 under the gun is a little loose. He makes it 2,000. Action folded around to Barry Greenstein. He mucks. Martin Stashko gets out of the way, as does Tommy Nord. Will Molson has king-queen on the button. Certainly not folding this in position. Could call. See a flop. Even to an under the gun raise. Raise. He elects to three bet, makes it 5,000 total. Gruesome might be suspicious over Will attacking the tight looking guy, but he's still got the tight looking guy who's probably got a tight hand to deal with. Gruesome gets out of the way. As does Robert Hydorn. Who? I'm sorry, all I can see is Kate right now. Okay, I'm done. See, now you feel like a dumb cop for raising ace 10 under the gun. Even on the off chance you're ahead, you're down with OOP. It's dumb cop. All right, we get it. You studied German. All I did was watch Hogan's Heroes. Kalfeld gives it up. 
And Molson adds 4K to his stack. I'm so curious to see that one. Show one. I know you are. Molson still with a six-figure stack. More than double the tournament average. Back to the secondary feature table. Guess who's playing a hand? That's right, Vanessa Selbst. Selbst v. Rupinen for the second time at this table. The re re rupinen On the river, Vanessa bets. 4,700. Vanessa Selbst fires more often than Alan Sugar. Rupinen is no Rupanzi. He's not going anywhere. Doesn't look like he has that much behind. He raises. For most of his chips, makes it 12,000 total. We all know how aggressive Vanessa can be. It has not been working out for her so far today. She's been slipping in almost every hand we've seen. A lot of possibilities out there on this board. Quads, full houses, Broadway, flushes, pair of tens. That one's pretty obvious. <laughs> Vanessa giving this serious consideration. And she elects to three bet, enough to put Rupinen all in. Here's my impression of Rupinen. Oh, why didn't I just call? <laughs> Here's my impression of Vanessa. I bleeping own you. You're mine. Well, if Rupinen folds here, he won't be leaving himself with much. If he calls and he's wrong, he leaves himself with nothing. Well, he does decide to fold. Vanessa's three bet gets through, and she finally gets her chip stack back above average. <coughs> you see that cough, James? Instead of telling someone their play was sick, you just cough. It's very hip. Vanessa now playing more than 56,000. January of this year, 2012. I graduated from Yale Law School. I guess I'm a JD, a Juris Doctorate. I guess my official title is Esquire, but I wouldn't really, uh, you don't have to call me that. <laughs> Graduating was amazing. It was actually really anticlimactic in a way, though, because I went to the registrar, I turned in my keys, and they were just like, okay. And I said, is that it? And they said, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I was just like, Okay, so it was really kind of a weird feeling, but I feel a tremendous sense of accomplishment. My ambition at the time that I went to law school was to sort of leave poker behind, you know, have it be a hobby for the rest of my life, and just be a lawyer, basically. My first two years, I didn't really play very much because I had so much work and I was probably working like 80 hours a week, so it just really didn't have time to fit it into the schedule. But the few tournaments I managed to play, I ran really well. And then at the end of my second year of law school, I won Mohegan Sun at NAPT the first time around. So at that point, I realized, like, you know, it's kind of now or never with poker. If you ask me what changed, basically I realized that my passion for poker was really too deep to just leave it behind. You know, I guess once a poker player, always a poker player. I think at least in the short term, I'm going to be a poker player with a law degree. I'm doing really well at poker. I really love poker. I'm just happy that I've gotten to where I am now. Oh, man, Vanessa Selbs blew it big time. I'm sorry, or should I say Vanessa Selbs Esquire, lol. <laughs> James, I'm making a rule. We have to call her Esquire for the rest of the episode, please. Who? You mean Vanessa Selbs Esquire? Yes. Let's check in on some of our former EPT champions. Anton Wig, nicely stacked right now, about 80,000 in chips. Lucien Cohen, also above average. Is he talking to another rat off camera? What's all that clicking? And Vladimir Gesh combined, who's facing a four bet from Nikolai Becker. <laughs> Gesh combined puts them all in. I got something, I will not eat. <laughs> Let's flip. Good luck. Yep. You're going to need it more than me. Oh, that's not nice. Becker at risk with ace-king. Gesh combine ahead with queens. A king and a queen on the flop, and a queen on the river. Quads for Gesh combine. We lose another German. Auf Wiedersehen. Worth pointing out, they were flipping there for nearly 90,000 chips. And with that pot, Vladimir Gesh combine takes the tournament chip lead. He has nearly 166,000. 
That means he's playing 207 big blinds. Will Molson is moving down the leaderboard, but still has the chip lead at our feature table. His fellow countryman, Sam Chartier, is moving back up the leaderboard and is second in chips overall. Let's check in on Sam, involved in a hand against Jens Weigel. Sam bets 17,500 on the turn. Weigel called. The river. Here's the board. Brings a potential flush. Chartier fired and was stationed on both the flop and the turn. He now checks, as does Weigel. <clears throat> garbage. Slightly better garbage. You know what they say, one man's trash? Hey, look at this. Get your head out the dustbin. <laughs> dustbin, that's hilarious. That's funnier than any gag I could write. It's a garbage can. We're in Europe, Joseph. So Sam Chartier takes a bit of a hit. Still a big stack, though. Still second overall. Over to our secondary feature table. Oh, look, Vanessa Selps is playing another hand. Stop the presses. And she's raising. After Bousquet bet and Grignenko called, it looks like Vanessa may be putting on the post-flop squeeze. Wouldn't put it past her. This was, in fact, a check raise. So action on Busquet. He elects to call. You cannot let Vanessa do this. Even if you flop the nuts, you have to play it safe. The key to playing against Vanessa is A, B, C. Always be cheap showdown. Well, the Russian gets out of the way, so we go heads up to the turn. Four hearts. Vanessa check raised the flop. Now she's first to act here on the turn. Heads up against Bousquet. Let's see if she keeps up the aggression. There's 28,000 in the middle. Vanessa has about 35,000 behind, and she decides to move all in. I'd say that qualifies as aggressive. Vanessa really could have anything here. But I have narrowed her range to huge made hands, big combo draws, pairs with flush draws, top pair, or total air. So Olivier's choice is pretty obvious here. Which is? Stall until the money. <clears throat> Seems like he's doing a good job of it. He lets it go. Vanessa Selbst is more aggressive than if Jason Statham were a hornet. Well done, Stapleton. You've just given some hack in Hollywood an idea for a new move. <laughs> $100 million budget. Vanessa up to nearly 63,000 in chips, just above the tournament average. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to PokerStars.com, where there are qualifiers every day. Welcome back to the PokerStars.com EPT Berlin. Czech team pro Martin Stashko has just been eliminated from our feature table by Lebanese qualifier Chady Mahej. But let's head out into the field where two more team pros are battling it out. Jan Heitman got moved off our feature table. He's now sitting alongside Enrique Pino. I notice he's added his HUD to his face. You're no longer playing against Jan Heitman. You're playing against Jan Heitman. Heitman has checked that flop. Jack 6-5 with two clubs. Pino bets 2,500. I wonder if those glasses tell him his prime directives. Heitman makes the call. Ace of hearts on the turn. That card completed some straight draws, added a few more. Heitman checks again. Pino bets again, this time 6,600. Action on Jan Heitman. Jan Heitman moves all in, foolish human. And wins the pot. Jan Heitman's equity, 100%. Chips being assimilated. Heitman still below average, but still playing more than 50 big blinds. The blinds currently 400, 800. 
with a 100 ante. Let's go back to our main feature table. We find the action on Andreas Kalfelt looking down Ace King of Diamonds. Beautiful. All the hope in the world looking at Ace King suited. Raising under the gun makes it 2,200. Barry Greenstein has pocket eights. And he makes the call. Barry's just calling the under the gun razor in case he's got a big one. Barry wants to see a flop as cheaply as possible. Hill Grusom gives up the small blind. Robert Hydorn mucks from the big blind. These two a statistical dead heat for now. 10, queen, 10. This isn't a great flop for either player. Barry with the advantage of position and hundreds of years of poker experience. Kalfeld checks to him. It does not continue. Barry bets 2,500. A call here would be kind of a loose peel. Well, he's got two overs and a gut shot. He makes the call. He'll see a turn card. It's fine. You just have to be willing to call down future streets. Two of clubs on the turn. Kalfeld checks a second time. Is he going to get a free card? Yes, he is. Barry checks behind. Love free cards. Love value. Five of hearts. So the board bricks out for Kalfelt. And he gets checked down. Barry shows the eights for the win. And that's just how it went. They flipped. Barry won. Not to the next one. Though well, you can't help but wonder if Barry would have maybe folded had you bet the Turner River. Oh, well, shake it off. Seriously, though, he probably would have folded. Okay, well played, though. Out in the field, we find current tournament chip leader Vladimir Geshkinbein. Bet 4,000 on that flop. Wolfgang Thomas moves all in, Gesh combined calls, and he's got Thomas at risk. Things aren't looking good for the Germans here in Berlin. Really bad flop for that hand. Thomas has two outs, he's drawing to a king. Gesh combines like a little Russian hitman over there, taking dudes out. Continues to build a monster chip stack. He now has more than 200,000. James, didn't you see his little monkey? It's a chimp stack from one EPT champion to another. Short while ago, Anton Wig was moved to our secondary feature table. Guess who he's just three bet? Vanessa Selbst. You're good. I cheated, I saw her name up there. She makes the call, we go to the flop. She is out of position. Well, that flop is pretty dry. That board's less coordinated than me and Jim class. Selbst checks. And some wig. The pre-flop aggressor. Continues. 3,700. Vanessa's going to float a lot of flops. Sometimes she'll have a decent hand. Sometimes she'll just be looking for weak spots to pick it up later. Most players aren't really folding even a piece in a three-bet pot. She doesn't appear to be giving up here. Also, it was a pretty small bet. She will make the call. Same as a small bet, just one chip. And she gets change. Queen of clubs on the turn. Doesn't change much, but puts a few more draws out there. Vanessa checks again. And Tom Wig is going to bet again. 11,700. This bet's a little more serious. At least it's more than half the pot this time. Vanessa lets it go. Still couldn't resist the urge to touch chips first, though. Anton Wig, now up above 100,000. Back to our main feature table as day 1A draws to a close. We've got a few new faces at the table. And still one beautiful one. I love you. Andre Santos, he'll pass. Barry Greenstein, Jack Nine folds. Maria Pospi. Isn't Germany a landlocked country? This sailor's a long way from the docks. <laughs> He's folded. Round to Tommy Nord with eights. He raises to two and a half thousand. Will Molson gives it up. Kings for Phil Gruesome. Check out these cowboys. Three bet for Shizzle. Gruesome, by the way, has managed to chip up back to his starting stack. It's actually quite impressive. Shows you what a little beer will do for you. And three bets to six and a half K. Idorn folds the button. Cal felt. 
And Mahesh give up their blinds. Time for you. Maybe. Action back on North. Hey, you know I'm not falling anymore. Some pretty valuable information. Nord can likely double up if he flops a set, but calling a three bet with almost nothing behind isn't exactly optimal. Nord does call. He will be first to speak on the flop. Maybe we're going to see the stop and go here. I like where your head's at, Hardigan. 7 9 Queen. We saw the stop, and there's the go. Nord does move all in, gets snap called by Gruesome. Dramatically snap called. And Nord way behind and at risk. Nord dead to an eight, possibly running straight cards. The turn takes away any backdoor draws. Nord now needs an eight on the river. Just two outs. If Gruesome can fade an eight, he'll have a nice little chip and a chair story for today. Thank you. Good luck. Well, that third king was a tad unnecessary. It seals Tommy Nord's fate and sees Phil Gruesome add 20,000 chips to his stack. You know, James, they call it the stop and go because usually you stop playing poker and go home. Phil Gruesome has had an emotional day today. I wonder if he's smiling because of his chip stacker because he finally got the dealer's digits. At one point, he was down to 2K. He ends the day close to 50K. An amazing turnaround. But if we check out the leaderboard at the end of day 1A, we'll see it's dominated by two former EPT champions. 110 players have survived the day, and out in front is Vladimir Geshkenbein with 201,000. Fourth, Anton Wig with 152,000. He may not be in the top 10, but I think Phil Grusin will just be happy to make day two. It was a fun table, otherwise I would have busted earlier, but I just wanted to just stay with the guys, it was a lot of fun. I can't remember the last time I had this much fun uh, playing poker at, like, in a tournament before. Uh, yeah, it was good, I, everyone was really friendly and a lot of different nationalities and uh, everyone was, yeah, it was a solid table. We had some beer, that's the only thing you can do when your shot's stacked, I can just recommend it to everybody, um, yeah. Good day. Next time, hundreds more players from across the globe come to Germany as day 1B kicks off. Previous Berlin champ Kevin McPhee has experience on his side. Once you had success somewhere, coming back to that spot, you're going to have a certain amount of confidence, a certain amount of swagger. While tennis legend Boris Becker is reveling playing on home turf. It's always good to be back in Germany, to play poker in Germany. Who will survive the day and make a play towards the penultimate crown of EPT8?